Newton, presenting to the Honorable Steny Hoyer. You know, it's been said if opportunity doesn't knock, build a door. For too many Americans living with epilepsy and other disabilities, that sound of opportunity knocks too seldom. But thanks to people from Congress, like Congressman Bartlett, like Senator Roy Blunt, like Tony Coelho, like Congressman Steny Hoyer, a lot of hope is raised, a lot of issues are resolved, and a lot of progress is made in making life better for everybody. As was said earlier tonight, it is about nonpartisanship and something that affects all of us in so many ways. When uh, Tony Coelho retired from Congress, it was Steny Hoyer who took up the baton, carried it across the finish line, and to this day champions the changes, the amendments that make it better, the opportunities for people to have more and more. The connection to epilepsy is personal, and the memory of his lovely wife, Judy, struggled with the disorder of epilepsy, continues to motivate Congressman Hoyer and doing the deeds that he does. I was honored to be the Chief of Staff to Congressman Tony Hoyer for nearly five years. Uh, in the 80s, I met Congressman Hoyer. He was an acquaintance. In the 90s and 2000s, he became a friend. And in the five years I worked with him, and not everybody can say that in the situations that we worked in many, many times, he became, in many ways, a big brother. I can tell you that I've tried to live my life by a saying. A saying is, children are living messages that we send to a time that we will not see. Well, let me tell you, friends, Steny Hoyer can be my messenger any day for any cause. Congressman Hoyer, come up, please. Are you going to give this to him? Thank you very much. First of all, I want to join my, tear, my dear, dear friends, Roy Blunt and Steve Bartlett, uh, in thanking those of you who are honored before us. In so many ways, what we do is the easy thing. Uh, what you do every day is the hard thing and you stay after it. And the testimonies that the doctors receive from uh, patients and colleagues who know their work uh, was extraordinary. And I join Steve and Roy in congratulating you. I want to also congratulate the others, but particularly you will forgive me for singling out, you understand I'm from Maryland, the Baltimore Sun. <laughs> <laughs> for their efforts, uh, because education is so much a part of what the Foundation does and what we need to do. First, let me say another word. You heard me uh, on that brief videotape say something about Steve Bartlett. And at the end, I said, it is a lesson that we ought to be learning today. Disease knows no party. It knows no ideology. It knows no geographical boundaries. It strikes uh, unnoticed, uh, at least in terms of a pre-notice that it's coming. That fact alone ought to focus us, as it has in many ways, on working in a bipartisan, nonpartisan fashion to address uh, that which threatens our health, our welfare, ourselves, and our families, and more importantly, our children. I am so honored to be honored with Steve Bartlett. When I said we spent hundreds of hours, I've had no other experience in the 32 years that I've been in Congress working with another member in such a focused and committed fashion as my experience with Steve Bartlett. Uh, 
And we sat uh, with, uh, I'm not going to mention all their names, but so many others. Uh, some with disabilities, uh, some not with disabilities. But it was after those with disabilities came to the Congress, talked to individual members of Congress, had the courage to tell their stories, their challenges, the prejudices they faced that made ultimately the difference in passing in 1990 on having President Bush sign on July 26, 1990, the Americans with Disabilities Act. I want to say, however, that uh, that was not the end, as all of you know, and as all of you have demonstrated by your commitment. There was much yet to be done. And Steve, uh, notwithstanding the fact he left the Congress, stayed with this focus, with this cause, uh, with this commitment that he had to ensure that what we enacted in 1990 was a reality in the lives of those we sought to touch. During the course of my service in Congress, I've had no better friend than Roy Blunt, as he said. He is not my Republican friend. He's not my congressional friend. Roy Blunt and Abby are my friends. Roy Blunt is a good and decent man who, like Steve Bartlett, has worked with me on so many different efforts, Special Olympics, Best Buddies, uh, efforts that reach out and lift up. I was so pleased that uh, the song that was played as uh, Connor performed uh, at first uh, was You Raise Me Up. It's a beautiful song. Josh Groban, who sings that song, came to my office one day with a number of other uh, advocates of the arts. And I told him I wanted to, him to sing that song because it was one of my favorite songs. And he did sing that song, and some of you heard the words, you raise me up. You raise me up so that I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy seas. Now the words of the last sentence of that song are, you raise me up to more than I can be. What all of you do, however, and I asked Josh Groban to change one word in that last line. Not to more than I can be, but to say that you raise me up to all that I can be. That's what your foundation is about. That's what the Americans with Disabilities Act is all about. To meet not only the physical barriers, but also the barriers of prejudice and misunderstanding. The barriers of a lack of education of what people can do, not what they can't do. And not to allow a prejudice that because you have epilepsy, you can't do, or you may do something during the course of whatever I ask you to do that would be uh, undermining of your efforts. Let me say that I, appreciate this honor as a world changer, but I'm not. But I am the agent of a world changer. I am the friend of a world changer. I was the colleague of a world changer who decided to leave the Congress, but not leave the cause, and asked me to be his agent to facilitate and ensure the passage of one of the most significant civil rights acts in the history of our country. That said to those who had a disability, had a challenge that perhaps some others did not have, come on in. We open the door. We're going to make some considerations, reasonable accommodations, to make sure that your country, you, your family, and your neighbors can be benefited by what you can do and not shut you out. I was Tony Quello's agent. Tony Quello has been an extraordinary world 
changer. I am so proud to have been his agent in this effort over the last 20 years plus to ensure that what we enunciated on July 26th, indeed what was enunciated the Declaration of Independence, that we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men and women are created equal, not the same, and are endowed by God with certain unalienable rights. That is the guts of our country's principle. And what the ADA did was to say that those with disabilities would be equally recognized and included. But the rights are not enforced or realized without the efforts of others on a daily, weekly, monthly, and annual basis. I want to thank each one of you, every one of you. Some contribute, some work, some publicize, some educate, some treat, some lift up. All of us are in this together, as Steve Bartlett said. I want to thank each one of you. You make such an extraordinary difference in the lives of my three daughters, my three grandchildren, and my two great-grandchildren, none of whom, as far as I know, have epilepsy, but each of whom could have. Their mother, their grandmother, and their great-grandmother was in their mid-40s. We were on the banks of Lake Geneva at a restaurant. She was holding a coffee cup, a coffee uh, cup and saucer in her hand. And she had a small seizure and the cup jumped from her hand. What you do every day is to ensure that if that happens to my children, your children, or the children of the world, that they will not be forgotten and that their lives will be fuller, better, and healthier. I am humbled by this honor as Tony Coelho's agent. Thank you very much.